Now at the moment, the Rolap and the Molap cubes are identical. We can see that our Rolap cube has 1,013 for internet order quantity in the calendar year 2005 for all countries, and that matches the value that we see in our Molap cube. We're going to change the Rolap cube so that the internet sales partition uses Rolap storage mode. We're also going to change the territory dimension to be a Rolap dimension. Then we're going to insert records and browse our Rolap cube and compare that to our results in the Molap cube. So let's go over to bids where we can see with our Rolap cube we currently have two partitions with reseller sales in Molap mode and internet sales also in Molap mode. We're going to change this to Rolap. We need to do this by selecting the partition so that it's highlighted here and then we select the storage settings link and it's important to select this partition prior to clicking the link because otherwise you're just setting default values and not actually changing the partition settings. So with the internet sales selected we'll open up the storage settings where we can see we have a variety of options here starting in the far left which is Molap and as we make selections, we'll see a description appear in the center of this dialog box. With Molap, both the detail data and the aggregation data is stored in multidimensional format on disk. The data and the aggregations are not stored until we do a process. And they're not updated unless we do another process. Now there's various types of processing that we can do, but nonetheless those values will not change without a process occurring. Now we have a scheduled MOLAP which stores the data similarly to MOLAP. The difference is with regular MOLAP the process occurs when we manually issue a processing command or when we use a scheduling tool such as SQL Server agent jobs or integration services packages. With scheduled MOLAP, the processing just occurs automatically every 24 hours. However, we have no mechanism for controlling that schedule or modifying that schedule. It just happens every 24 hours beginning 24 hours after the end of the last process. So if it takes an hour to process, then that 24 hour window will be constantly shifting by one hour each day. Automatic MOLAP listens to changes out on the server to determine if the source data has changed. There's a polling mechanism that listens for modifications to any table that's referenced in a data source view. And if any data changes, then that triggers processing. Another term for this is proactive caching. Now notice in the description that it says processing is performed automatically with no restriction on latency. What that means is the processing occurs and queries will be directed to the existing cube while the processing is underway. So there's effectively two copies of the partition at the same time, one that is currently being processed and one that is currently being queried. As soon as the processed partition has completed processing, then analysis services dispenses with the existing partition and allows queries to hit that newly processed partition. That means the data that users will see while the processing is underway is only as current as the last time that partition was processed. Then we get into medium and low latency MOLAP and the difference between those two is that medium latency has 4 hour latency defined and low latency has 30 minute latency defined. But if we go into options here we can see that this is where we define the latency in terms of minutes, days, hours, or even seconds. But there are some other settings here. So before we talk about latency, just let's look at a moment at what is triggering the updates. So again, there's a polling mechanism that's monitoring the tables that are part of the data source view. And if data changes, then the silence interval is used to determine how long after the last change must elapse before analysis services begins processing. The silence interval here says wait 10 seconds after the last change before analysis services starts processing. And the reason is to accommodate a slower trickle feed. So analysis services wants to wait a little while to make sure that the feed has stopped. What happens if the feed does not stop? There is a silence override interval here that comes into play. 
if 10 minutes have elapsed and there has been no 10 second silence interval, then analysis services will begin the processing at that point. So that determines when processing starts, the latency aspect, whether it's the 30 minutes for low latency or the four hours for the medium latency, what that deals with is how long do queries continue to use the existing partition, the one that's not being processed. Once that time expires, then that cache, as it's called here, is dropped. In other words, that partition is removed and analysis services switches that partition to rollup mode. So then the queries are being redirected to the data source and the queries will have the benefit of using fresh data while the processing is underway for this MOLAP partition. Once the MOLAP partition has completed processing, Analysis Services switches that partition back to MOLAP mode, and now all further queries will be using the MOLAP storage mode, which of course will only have the data as fresh as the last time it was processed. So that's the difference between low latency and medium latency. Then we get into real-time MOLAP, and this is where the detailed data is stored in the relational source. It stays there and only aggregations are stored in multidimensional format. The server will listen for notifications to determine when to update the aggregations. And then we have real-time rollap, which is where everything stays in relational format. The aggregations are also in relational format, although those are stored as indexed views rather than physical copies of the data in another table. So with the rollap mode, all the queries will have the current data. Now, ROLAP can be slower than MOLAP. There are a lot of factors that will determine how much slower ROLAP is than MOLAP, what type of aggregations that we have, how large the partition is, whether the data for the query comes from one partition or multiple partitions, and so forth. So it's very difficult to say categorically whether the user will actually perceive a slower query or not. And the only way to know for sure is to set up the partition and test it. So here we are in rollup mode. I'll click OK. All I've done at this point is I have configured the partition. I need to deploy this change in order for that to take effect on the server. Now before I do that, I'm going to go to the territory dimension here and with the dimension selected, I'll go to the properties for the territory and down at the bottom we have our storage mode property which I will change to rollup. With these changes made, I'll go ahead and deploy.